Hello everybody, I'd like to introduce this presentation regarding the Latin square design, which is abbreviated by capital LS. I will talk about the advantages and the disadvantages and how to how to make the calculation by hand. This design in this design, the experimental units are arranged in two rows and columns, of course, randomly. And if we have two variables, we can simply control these two variables by using this design. Regarding the advantages of this design, this design is a very simple calculation design in comparison with, for example, completely randomized design or completely randomized block design. And we can get more accurate results by using this design. But the limitation of this design is that it requires that both the two factors and the treatments should be of the same size. So there is no free spaces for the researcher regarding this design. Another limitation is that if the square is small, let's say 3 by 3 or 4 by 4, the value of the degree of freedom for the error becomes less. So the value of the mean square of the error becomes large. So the possibility of failing in some mistakes or some error becomes great. So for this design, it is recommended that it is good for, let's say, 5 by 5 or more. This is our question. We have five ingredients. Ingredients A, B, C, D, and E. These ingredients affect the reaction time of a chemical process and we need to study it so these are these are the treatments the treatments are the the addition of these ingredients and the response or the yield we need to measure is the reaction time we need to control two factors the first factor is the batch first the batch of the a new material and regarding the batch for the new material it is only large enough to permit five runs to be made so if you see the table to the right here for batch one we have only five runs And again, each run requires approximately one and a half hours. So only five runs can be made in one day. So we have to control these two variables and the researcher decide to do this controlling by using the Latin square. So the experimenter decided to run the experiment as Latin square so that the day and the batch effects may be systematically, systematically controlled. What is needed is to analyze this data from the experiment and to draw the conclusion. The value of the significant level is 0 0.05. So these are the records. We have 25 observations. We have five observations for each 
batch and we have five treatments to be done in five days and regarding the treatment the letters here represent the the addition of the ingredient and regarding the time it is the response by using the the specific treatment so first before starting the calculation by hand we need to rearrange these data in rows and columns in order to facilitate the calculation process so we have this controlled variable which is the batch of the new material we have five and the other controlled variable is the day we have five days and inside this table we have the treatments which are randomly distributed along the rows and along the columns and the number inside these cells represent the the time for the reaction this is the latin square ANOVA table with its full components so regarding the sources of the variation we have the variation for the treatments which which is uh, our interest we have four rows we have four columns and we have four the row regarding the rows rows here represent the batches and the column here represent the day we need to calculate the degree of freedom then we need to calculate the value of the ss then the mean square then simply we can calculate the f statistic and then we can compare it with the determined f critical so we need to fill all of these cells inside this table notice that this design consider that there is no reaction between the variables which means that there is no reaction between the treatment and the rows and no reaction between the treatments and the columns and no reaction between the rows and the columns so this will facilitate the calculation and this is one of the advantage of the using of this design first of all let's state the hypothesis as we are interested in the treatments only because the the two variables which are the batches of the new material and the day has been controlled by this design so we are interested only in the treatment so the null hypothesis for the treatments states that the the mean of the time of the reaction using the ingredient a is the same as the mean of the time of the reaction by using b using same like mu c same like mu d same like mu e we can express this in other way by saying that all means are same and regarding the the means the five means for the five reaction it's already inside the table above to the right for example for treatment a the average of the time of reaction is 8.40 while for b it is 25.60 etc and the the least time is for the treatment E or by using the ingredient E the time is 3.20 so this is the null hypothesis 
while the alternative one states that at least one of the means is not the same or different from others. So we need to test these two sets of hypotheses. Let's start first the calculation of the degrees of freedom. For the treatments, the degree of freedom for the treatments is simply equal to the number of treatments, which is 5 minus 1. So 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Degree of freedom for the rows is simply equal to the number of rows minus 1 and number of rows is simply 5 so 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 and also the degree of freedom for the columns is simply equal to the number of columns minus 1 and number of columns is equal to 5 so 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 notice that for this design Number of rows is the same as the number of columns, same as the number of treatments, and all are equal to 5. So the degrees of freedom for the three variables are 4. In order to calculate for the degree of freedom for the error, simply we multiply r minus 1 by r minus 2. r here represent number of rows or number of columns or number of treatments. So r equal 5. So r minus 1 is 4. Multiply by r minus 2 which is 3. So we have 12. Notice that as R becomes great, the value of the degree of freedom for the error becomes significantly large. And in this case, the value of the mean square for the error becomes less. So the accuracy becomes great. To calculate for the degree of freedom total, simply we square the R minus 1. So 5 square minus 1, which is 25 minus 1, is equal to 24. Or simply you can sum the degree of freedom for the treatments, which is 4, and the degree of freedom for the rows, which is 4 again, and the degree of freedom for the column and 4. So we have 12, and the degree of freedom for the error is 12, so the total is 24. You will get the same result. Now we can fill these degrees of freedom inside the Latin square table, same like what we have here. Now we need to, to make the calculation for the sum of squares, which is the SS. Before starting the calculation of the SS, we need to calculate the correction factor. And for the calculation of the correcting correction factor, we need to know the the total of the observations and in our experiment it is 147 by adding all the data inside this table and regarding the number of observations we have 25 observation which is simply 5 by 5 and 5 represent r so the formula to calculate the correction factor is simply take the summation of the observations all observation square it and divide it by r squared this is the total observations or the grand observations we square it divide it by 5 by 5 so if you proceed, you will get the value of the correction factor, which is 864.36.
So this is the way how to calculate the correction factor. Now simply we can utilize this correction factor in order to calculate for the other values of the SS. To calculate the SS total or some square total, we need to square all of these records inside the, this table. All these records, we have 25 observations. So the formula for SS total is simply we need the summation of the squared observation, all observation, minus the correction factor. The summation of the observed or squared observation, we simply square all of the 25 records or simply you can use the Excel in order to facilitate this calculation. And the summation of the squared observation is 1071. So this is the summation of the squared observation, and this is the correction factor, and this is the value of the SS total, 206.64. Now we need to calculate the SS for the rows. And regarding the rows, it is simply the, the batches of the new material. What is needed to calculate for the SS for the rows, we need to, to use all of these totals here. The total for the five batches and this is the formula to get the SS for the rows. Simply we take the total of the observation for each batch and then square it and then take the the summation for all the five batches divided by R which is five minus the correction factor. So this is, let's say, row one squared. This is R2. This is R3. This is four. This is five. And this is the value of the correction factor. So if you proceed, you will get the value of the SS for the rows to be 15.44. By the same way, we can calculate the SS for the columns, but we need to, to get the sum of the observation in each day. So for the first day, it's 33, while for the second day, it's 28, etc. We should square these values and take the summation of the square divided by the number of r which is 5. So this is the formula to get the SS for the columns which are the the days summation of c sub i c here represent the the word column divided by r minus the correction factor. So this is the total of column 1 which is first day, this is for day two, this is for day three, this is for day four, and this is for day five, and this is the value of R, and this is the value of the correction factor. So if you proceed, you will get the value of the SS for the columns to be 12.24. Now the rest is only to get the SS for the treatments. So we will take care of the table to the right. 
which shows the total and the mean for all the five treatments. So what to do to calculate for the SS of treatment? We take the, the total for each treatments. For example, this is the, the total observation for treatment A. We should square it and the same to do with the other treatments. And we divide this square by five and minus correction factor. So same like what we have here. This is the total of the treatment A. 28 is the total for treatment B. 44 is the total for treatment C. 17 for D and 16 for the last treatment, which is E. Divided by five minus the correction factor. So simply we'll get the value of the SS for treatment, which is 141.44. Now we can simply calculate the SS for the error because simply the SS total is the total of the SS for all the variables. So the SS total, it's already calculated, it is known. The SS for the treatments, also it's known. The SS for the rows is known. The SS for the columns, again, it's known, while the missing one is the SS for the error. So we can keep the SS for the error in one side and move the rest to the opposite sides. So the sign will change. So we'll get this new formula. So the SS for the error, this is the SS total. This is the SS for the treatments. This is the SS for the rows and this is the SS for the columns. So the value of the SS for the error is simply 37.52. Notice that we, we don't need to calculate the SS for the interaction because this design Consider that there is no reactions. So these are all the SS. We fill it inside the Latin square table. Now we need to, to calculate the mean squares, MS. The formula to calculate the mean square is simply dividing the value of the SS by the degree of freedom. So for the MS of the treatment, the value of the SS for the treatment, this is the value of the SS for the treatment, and this is the degree of freedom for the treatments. So this is the mean squares of the treatments. The same way for the MS of the rows, this is the SS for the rows, and this is the degree of freedom for the rows, and this is the MS for the rows. For the columns, this is the SS for the columns, and this is the degree of freedom for the columns, and this is the MS of the columns. And finally, the MS for the error, is simply this is the SS of the error and this is the degree of freedom for the error which is 12. So the MS of for the error is 3.13. Let's understand again the last formula for the error. Notice that the degree of freedom for the error is in the denominator. So if the degree of freedom is less or not that much big, 
so the value of the ms for the error will be, will be great so it's better for the degree of freedom for the error to be as large as possible this is why there is a recommendation to use this design for the big squares for example from five times five and up so these are the mean squares now we need to calculate for the value of the f as i have said we are interested only in the treatments so the f for the treatment is simply dividing the mean square of the treatments by the mean square of the error the mean square of the treatments is 35.36 while for the error it is 3.13 so the the value of the f for the treatment is simply 11.30 notice that the value of the f is somehow it's big so the chance to reject the null hypothesis is great the remaining to fill or to complete all the contents of this table is to determine the f critical for the treatments to find the f critical for the treatment we should know three values first we need to know the probability which is the value of the significant level which is 0.05 it is already given in our question we should know two degrees of freedom the first one which is called the degree of freedom in the numerator is simply the degree of freedom for the treatment which is four and the second degree of freedom is called the degree of freedom in the denominator which is simply the degree of freedom for the error which is 12 as shown in the table above so now we can return back to one of the f distribution table with probability of 0 0.05 and take the intersection between these two degrees of freedom so we need to, to find the f critical for probability of 0 0.05 first degree of freedom 4 and the second one is 12. this is the table of the f statistic for probability of 0 0.05 In this row we should take the degree of freedom of the treatments which is 4 and in this column here we should have the degree of freedom for the error which is 12 so the intersection between these two degrees of freedom is the value of the f critical which is 3.26 so the f critical for probability of 0 0.05 and two degrees of freedom 4 and 12 is simply 3.26 so by this we finish all of the calculations we need now we need to make the conclusion so for the treatments as we see here the value of the calculated f or f statistics is greater than the f critical so for the treatment we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative one and the alternative hypothesis states that one of the means of the five treatments is not the same as the other of course at least so this is the conclusion 
So we have a significance at level 0.05 for the treatments. Another way to understand or to make the conclusion is by understanding this drawing. What we have here below is the F curve for two degrees of freedom. The first is four and the second is 12. You know that the shape of the F curve is changing with the changing of the two degrees of freedom. And the value of the F critical, we determine the value of the F critical by the F distribution table. It is 3.26. So here we have the value of the F critical, which is 3.26. And simply the the area right to the, the to the this value of the F critical is simply the probability or the significant level, which is 0 0.05. Regarding the calculated F or F statistic, it is 11.30. So it is significantly larger than the F critical and it is to the right of the F critical and lies in the rejection region. Notice that this F critical divide the curve region into two regions, the right, the region to the right of the F critical is the, is called the rejection region. Of course, rejection here means rejection the null hypothesis while the region to the left of the F critical is called the non-rejection region or non-rejection of the null hypothesis. So because the value of the calculated F lies in the rejection region, we conclude that we should reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative one. That's all about the Latin square design. If you have any comments, please write it down. Don't forget to click the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.